common sense come to your table? of a player talent raising issues about the off taker issues as well as the injection and at your end of the ministry what is being done to uh, deal with those uh, players concerns i mean i know why you're asking these questions because of the recent uh, uh, you know resignations at talo oil you know which is attributed to uh, their inability to meet uh, uh, projections of crude oil and ghana being blamed uh, for 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 that uh, one of the reasons they have given, uh, surely, is the increasing uh, gas to oil ratio, you know, as you re-inject gas uh, into an oil field. Uh, there is a time when uh, the, the productivity of the reservoir will, will reduce, and that will affect uh, crude oil production. Uh, but this is an issue we have been trying to resolve with, with TALO. Uh, the fact that you know, they are injecting more of the gas that they are producing. Um, uh, means that we have to find a way to increase uh, gas supply from, from Jubilee, you know. But increasing gas supply from Jubilee uh, means that uh, you have to reduce gas supply from another field operated by another company. I mean, given the level of demand that we have, you cannot increase uh, gas production from Jubilee and keep the level of production from the other fields because there is no you know, demand for, for, for that. And so uh, this affects other players, you know, other than Talo Oil. And so the Minister for Energy has constituted a body uh, comprising all the, the, the gas producers uh, so that we can discuss uh, a workable solution, uh, build, building consensus around that solution in order that nobody is adversely affected. I mean, certainly we need the gas for power generation, uh, but we also have commitment to the gas producers. Once they produce the gas, we have to pay. In some of the contracts, you have take or pay obligations. Even if they, they, you don't take it, you still have to pay. And that is why we are confronted with in the OCTP uh, contract. And, and therefore, uh, increasing gas from one field and reducing from another have some implications, including financial implications. That is why we need to be able to reach some, some consensus uh, before implementing whatever solution we will, we, will, we will arrive at. What will this committee be doing in terms of the pre pre presenting proposals to the minister as in the way forward or what? Yes, certainly. I mean, we want to be able to get uh, proposals with inputs from the producing companies. And there are a number of uh, proposals that have come up. You know, for example, some have uh, suggested that uh, because we are already uh, paying for the gas from OCTP, whether we take it or not, we will pay. Uh, Jubilee gas is free for now because of the foundation volumes that Ghana has been, been given for free. And so you increase Jubilee gas uh, production, reduce supply from OCTP, even though you will still pay for it, but you have been able to neutralize the composite gas price with the free gas coming from, from Jubilee. Mm -hmm. That is one. And so the benefits you drive from this proposal is that you neutralize the composite gas price with the free gas that is coming, even though you will pay uh, for what you will not consume from OCTP. But other advantages are the liquids. We get more liquids from Jubilee, you know, and therefore Ghana Gas is able to produce more LPG uh, to meet 50% of the, of the demand, the domestic demand. And so whichever way you go, there are disadvantages, there are some advantages. But there are other options that we may have to look at. How do we uh, uh, increase demand, for example? You know, and you can increase demand by bringing uh, industries that take on uh, more of the gas. Uh, Ghana is uh, pursuing the petrochemical uh, a, a hub project which we seek to largely use uh, our gas. We are discussing with uh, other countries the possibility of exporting uh, gas to, to them. And then also there is that option of uh, reducing gas imports from, from Nigeria. The minister has already given a directive to reduce gas import from Nigeria from 90 million scarf to 30 million scarf. That frees up uh, up to 60 million scarf that we can use to uh, justify increase in gas production from Jubilee. Mm -hmm. And so the solutions are not out of, out of hand. We need to discuss to be able to build a consensus. Mm -hmm. And this is why some of us think that um, Talo uh, may have gone to the market too early. 
to pronounce on what will happen uh, next year, uh, given that we are discussing all possible uh, options that will uh, ensure that, that that does not happen. Is there a clear timeline that no. the ministry is working with period, not dates that open that all other things being equal by middle of next year, and by the end of next year, certain things should be in place to address all because it, it might not just be about Talu, but even other patients as well. I mean, there are certainly uh, uh, some of the options that are short term, others are medium to long term, you know. Uh, we also have discussed the uh, need to uh, drill a new gas injection well, you know, so we can store the gas to free up more oil from the producing oil, oil fields. Uh, and so some are short term. The, the directive to reduce gas imports is short term. And so when you free up 60 uh, million scarf and you increase uh, Jubilee from the current 80 uh, to 120, you know, that would have solved the problem for now. In future, as you re-inject more, the problem will come back. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the medium-term solutions that we are also discussing would have kicked in. Mm -hmm. you know? And so uh, we do not think that it is that dramatic as uh, Talu is, uh, is, is pointing to. So if, if I get from you that uh, these short-term measures could even happen in the next uh, quarter? Or even yeah, exactly. Quarter yeah, yeah. Do I get from you that uh, the take or pay whole agreement tied your hands in taking the decision on that you take up more supply from Jubilee? No, 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 really. I think it's largely the demand, you know. And also, uh, if you have uh, your own gas uh, versus uh, gas coming from uh, OCTP that you have to pay for, you know, the option that I gave earlier, you could still pay and use your free gas. Mm -hmm. So you meet your payment obligation, but you are using your free gas. And using the free gas has some advantages. And one of the advantages, as I told you, is the composite gas price. The domestic gas price will go down the more uh, free gas that you use. Okay. And also, I talked about the liquids, the LPG that is coming from Jubilee. We don't get liquids from the OCTP. And so there are certainly advantages of increasing the Jubilee uh, uh, gas production. But as I indicated, uh, there are other contractual obligations on the OCTP and we need to be able to discuss beyond the take or pay, you know, to reach consensus before you are able to implement these solutions. And other, other things we could hope that yeah. by before the end of the next day, like the next half of next day, some concrete things have been done. Yeah, but I mean, for the short term measures, we should be able to yeah. start implementing and that should be able to provide relief. Uh, to all of us uh, as far as uh, uh, Jubilee production is concerned. Don't forget that when Jubilee production reduces, we also suffer mm -hmm. in revenue. Mm -hmm. You know, the Minister for Finance has already given his projections of um, the revenue that we will generate from, from oil. And so if there is a reduction in uh, crude oil uh, production, that affects us as well. So uh, it is in the interest of all of us to uh, discuss and come to mm -hmm. a workable solution. Uh, so that uh, they are able to meet the expectations of their shareholders. We are able to meet our budget uh, uh, revenue projections. And that was one thing that I was coming to about the, are there any initial numbers about the impact of this revision on revenue going forward? Well, uh, I, I, we've asked Talo to give us, uh, uh, you know, better and further particulars, mm -hmm. you know, because you're getting different numbers yeah. that are bandied around, you know. Uh, some have said that $400 yeah, million, $400 million dollars, dollars, uh, Talo is going to lose, to lose you know, this. and if they are to lose $400 million, I don't think that is specific to Ghana. That may be their group, you know, uh, revenue uh, loss, and not only Ghana. Because if you look at the numbers in terms of how much production they are going to lose from Ghana, that certainly will not translate into $400 million uh, US dollars. Um, you go to their website, they put out about 12000 barrels a day that they are going to lose from their group operation. And of this, 8,000 is going to be lost from Ghana mm -hmm. uh, production. If you multiply 8,000 by a crude oil price, which stands at $60, uh, and is projected to remain at $60 into next year, you're talking about 170 million uh, US dollars or so. So it's not 400 million. Mm -hmm. you know, on our side, yes, we would lose some, some revenue, uh, but we need to look at what impact does oil revenue make on the budget? 